Craft Technologies AI Enhanced Large Cap ETF has soared this year. We want to tell you more what's behind the run. So we speak with here Francis O, oh, Chief Operating Officer at Craft Technology. So a mom, I guess, is uh, what we're calling it here, right? When we look at the letters. Um, tell me a little bit about the 8% in November, nearly 40% this year. Um, did you anticipate that strength? Uh, first of all, thank you, and good to see you again, Nicole. So our the, the AMOM ETF, AI Last Cap US Momentum ETF, the surge is quite a good uh, this year and uh, delivering over around the 10% point of our performance this year. And then if we are looking at the November performance alone, and the, one of the, the, the Key stock uh, has been contributed uh, for this uh, return is uh, the Tesla. It is hard to say whether our model was uh, anticipating the Trump trade uh, for, and then maybe uh, anticipating for Tesla, who might, uh, which is, has been in the most benefited uh, from Tesla trade so far. Uh, Trump trade is so far. It is hard to say that, but the, the interesting thing is the our AMO model has been um, showing a the strong conviction of the Tesla stock since the, the beginning of the April this year, and that has been a the good contributor uh, for the performance so far. And on other names like the, the NVIDIA, which is our top name uh, for AMO at this moment, at the same time, the some other names like uh, the Netflix uh, has been a very uh, proven as a quite a good stock pick uh, for our AMO model so far. Yeah, and you're using um, your own research technology to put this together. You celebrated five years now this summer with a lot of powerful performance milestones. You know, when yes. you read the articles, they do certainly give you a big credit here, 40% higher over one year, as we noted. Um, you know, the the computer, the AI in your um coding, I guess you want to call it, is picking what stocks stay in this, right, for the momentum. Yes, right. The interesting right now, our AI, the models are, are giving a uh, conviction to those uh, AI, the names are in, in our uh, portfolio right now, including the NVIDIA is there, also the Tesla is uh, not directly to the, the, the chip maker, but another name such as Broadcom, uh, who oftentimes uh, kind of mentioned as the next uh, NVIDIA uh, for delivering uh, the AI revolutionary technology development for the next coming years are, are there as well. So uh, what I can say is that our AI models are at this moment still believing there are the loom for the growth for those AI names, uh, even though the, we are having a little bit of headwind because of the, the higher, uh, the 10 year treasury yield is a uh, like, little bit of swinging the market. But in our model in general, the still of showing it the favorable uh, and do not uh, take a the kind of a defensive position yet. And how often are you rebalancing this and changing the names in here? I mean, you have a lot of great names in here. You had Tesla, which was a, certainly an outperformer. NVIDIA yes. was an outperformer. Other names included Apple, um, and I saw Eli Lilly and Broadcom and ServiceNow. Mm -hmm. How often are you changing the names in the U.S. large cap fund, this AI enhanced momentum fund? Right. We do change the names, um, not we, the RAM models are changing name every month. Uh, every month beginning usually the second trading day. So you can take a look for what will be the new names uh, in our portfolio in the, the beginning of the December. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the every month we are seeing the full shuffling of the stocks. For example, like your NVIDIA, we've been seeing that names uh, since uh, kind of three years back. The, that has been, that has been a name that we constantly, consta consistently the seen uh, uh, our portfolio. The similar story for the Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly has been a uh, good contributor for uh, AMOM for the last two years. Right now, it's a little bit shaky uh, for the uh, the latest one to two months of performance Eli Lilly. But let's see whether our model will see uh, sending the, the continuous supporting of Eli Lilly for the next month or not. I think, it, I think this was always most fascinating because I've been speaking with you pretty much since day one um, that right. you launched this and um, it has been an exciting run. And in fact, um, people should understand, you know, we gave a one year where you're outperforming the S&P 500, but it's worth noting that five year annualized returns mm -hmm. also outperforming the S&P 500. You know, we see the 18 
versus the 15 um, percent over the annualized. And that's impressive. And of late, there are a couple of sectors that are not in this as of November 2024. Right. No utilities, right. no consumer yes. staples, very little energy materials, real estate. These sectors mm -hmm. are out of favor. The AI is saying no way. Um, so I let her say because AMM only picked the 50 stocks uh, in every balance. It is quite concentrated portfolio. So uh, uh, we have a different model has a different weighting. Like the QLFT has uh, the more weighting for the consumer staples, but for the AMM model concentrated portfolio, it favors to the information technology sector, which is uh, containing 50% of uh, uh, the weight in the portfolio, which is uh, um, that is first priority but showing not so much a priority in the utility uh, consumer staples and energy. and But it doesn't necessarily mean that our the model dislike the, those sectors all the time, uh, which is not. So for example, like uh, two years back, uh, we have a record of the, the overweighting energy quite a very large portion in this model, and that has been a very right the bat, uh, if I remember correctly. Mm. You want to mention a little bit about QRFT before I let you go? Yeah. Sure, sure. So the QLFT is the, um, another of our model, um, the using multi-factor model, uh, utilizing the deep learning technology uh, for forecasting what factors could be outperforming for the next coming months. QLFT and AMOM is all kind of slightly different, but QLFT have uh, 350 names uh, in portfolio. And right now, uh, that uh, QLFT portfolio is sending a little bit more defensive com compared to the, the AMOM um, ETF uh, at this moment. I think the one of the primary reason for that is the QLFT at this moment our model is telling the quality factors are the factors to to have a take a kind of a strong look at so it's a little bit more the um, the the quality factor focus and the major difference between the QLFT and AMOM is the AMOM Nvidia is a top name but QLFT uh, we take out Nvidia in two months ago and still not holding Nvidia Francis O, Chief Operating Officer, Craft Technologies. Nice to see you, Francis. Thank you.